Hi everybody, welcome to day 20, Surrender to Wholeness. Yoga Pants and Plants. 30 Days of Compassionate Yoga is an invitation to journey toward being in the present moment, an opportunity to emulate the way nature lives in the moment. Be like a plant. Don't worry how you look. Notice how you sense and respond like the way a tree reaches for the sun or a source of water. Nourish yourself with movement and stillness. Allow compassion to flourish for a little bit of time every day. Day 20, Surrender to Wholeness. After 19 days of practice, you are ready to notice your wholeness. Wholeness is an exquisite connection of the body and mind with the present moment. Surrendering to wholeness is a profound presence that you can rely on whenever you feel lonely, lost, or disoriented. Begin seated on a mat or a chair with a pillow or a blanket in a way that the body feels most supported. Gently become aware of the space that your body occupies. Find the awareness of a deeper connection that place that resonates with compassion as a resource that is found in and around you. Invite the mind to take a seat in the body. Notice how the mind comes in. Is it active or calm? Is it scattered or focused? Notice with compassion rather than judgment for what is current in this moment. Allow awareness to smooth out any places that need settling. The back, the feet, the spine, the neck. Notice how this awareness calms and settles. Bring present awareness to the deep inner core the respiratory diaphragm, below the rib cage, the muscles that wrap around the belt area, the muscles that run along the spine that provide support and stability, and the muscles that form the pelvic floor. Find your diaphragmatic breath and sense and feel the expansion of the pelvic floor with each breath. As you continue to breathe, notice the expansion into the side of the body and the spine. Using your mind to focus on one specific aspect of your body, trace a line with your finger from the pubic bone very slowly up the front line of the body to the place on the forehead between the eyes. Take a deep breath and trace the line back down very slowly to the pubic bone. Try this again, this time breathing in to fill the body with air as you trace the line all the way up to the place on your forehead and then release the breath out all the way back to the pelvic bone. You can let your hands rest on your legs as you continue to do this mentally. Breathe in this way from the pubic bone to the head on an inhale and the head to the pubic bone on the exhale for at least three breaths. Before moving on, just notice the energy in the body ebbing and flowing from head to the pelvic floor. Consider this quote from Philip Shepard, the author of Radical Wholeness. The head is great at analysis. 
but the word analysis means to break apart. We're trying to create a whole picture of the world through analysis. It is a contradiction in terms, almost. The body knows how to integrate once you're deep at rest on the pelvic bowl. You can see how this breathing from the pubic bone to the head and the head to the pubic bone and taking that awareness deeper into the pelvic bowl is a way to feel wholeness. Gently guide the body into a horizontal position on the mat. Keep your bean or rice bags close. Find comfort on the back with the legs stretched out and use a rolled blanket or a towel if needed to go behind your knees. Place both rice or bean bags on top of the respiratory diaphragm near the rib cage. The bags can be stacked on top of each other, holding gently with one or both hands. Breathe in, pay attention to the respiratory diaphragm. This is part of breathing we are most aware of from our training all the way back to day two. Exhale, sensing the props. Once you have a good awareness of the respiratory diaphragm, move the props to the area of the pubic bone and breathe at least three times to sense and feel in this area. Then move one bag back to the respiratory diaphragm near the ribs and sense the synchronous movement of the breath in the deep inner core. Continue for at least three breaths. Then move the bag from the respiratory diaphragm up the body to rest on the upper chest for three breaths. And then moving the bag up to the forehead sensing and feeling the breath in and out for three more breaths. The bags provide greater awareness of breathing in at the pelvic floor and traveling up the body through the heart and the throat to the head and then releasing back down through the throat, the heart center, the belly and into the pelvic bowl. Give thanks for the mental awareness of how the deep inner core works in the breathing process and how what happens in the inner core is connected to the head. This practice edges you toward the feeling of wholeness. We swim in a culture or a way of being that gives most attention to the head and what we think and analyzing what we feel as emotions, we cut ourselves off from the whole of our being. The next time you have a problem that you would like to break apart in order to decide what to do, try this type of breathing and see what arises.
Focus on the diamond that is the pelvic floor, the muscles that stretch in a diamond shape from pubic bone to sit bone, sit bone to tailbone, tailbone to the other sit bone, and sit bone to the pubic bone. Then mentally trace that again, this time with the breath, to really get a sense of the strength and stability this area provides without our awareness. Pubic bone inhaling to sit bone, exhaling from sit bone to tailbone, inhaling tailbone to the other sit bone, and exhaling sit bone to pubic bone. Gently move into an arch and flatten by arching the lower back. The tailbone pushes toward the floor, returning to neutral. Then lift the tailbone up and notice the flat back and return to neutral. Bring the two fingers to the belly button. Move them diagonally, one going toward one of your hip bones and the other going to the shoulder that's on the opposite side. With awareness of the hip bone and the shoulder that is diagonal, curl the body forward on this diagonal line and then release to neutral. Do that curl three more times, releasing to neutral each time. Then pressing the hip and shoulder diagonally into the ground so as to arch the back diagonally and release to neutral. And then do that arch three more times, releasing to neutral each time. Take a few breaths, breathing from the pubic bone to the place between the eyes, and then releasing the breath back from the head to the pubic bone. Now with the fingers on the belly button, move the fingers diagonally to the other shoulder and hip that didn't move in the last practice. With awareness of the hip bone and the shoulder that is diagonal, curl the body forward on a diagonal line, release to neutral. Do that curl three more times, releasing to neutral each time. Then pressing the hip and shoulder diagonally into the ground so as to arch the back diagonally, release to neutral, and do that arch three more times, releasing to neutral each time. Take a few breaths, full body breaths between the pubic bone to the head, breathing fully in and releasing out. Now you can roll over to a tabletop position. You can guide the body back and forth, finding movement in the hips and the shoulder joints. Notice how the breath flows here as you come into a cat and cow, sensing and feeling the movements with your awareness of the deep inner core muscles. Then move 
to curling in the opposite arm and leg under the body and then extending them out to a bird dog type pose. Remember to keep the pelvis stable as you do this. Try that again three to five movements and then switch to the other side. Here again, keeping the pelvis stable and even on each side. Curling the opposite arm and leg under the body and then extending the arm and the leg out for a bird dog type pose. And then do that on this side for three to five movements. When you're complete with that, you're in tabletop in a neutral position. Move the side body. So on one side from the armpit to the hip is curling toward each other. And you can turn the head to look back toward the tailbone and then coming back to the center and then moving the side body on the other side, curling the body so they're contracting from the armpit to the hip bone and then looking toward the tailbone and then find some ease with that rotating really comfortably back and forth three to four more times. Walk the hands out, curl the toes and lift from the center of the body up into a down dog with your knees bent as much as needed. The spine is neutral, allow the neck and head to release. Bend the knees and lengthen. Bend and lengthen. Then walk the feet towards the hands and find a forward fold. From the forward fold, gently come up, vertebrae by vertebrae, bend the knees and come into a chair pose, keeping the hands at the hip crease. Tap the area as you lengthen the body up into mountain. Shake the body out a bit, moving from side to side, and then find a steady, stable pelvis using an arch and flatten. Making sure your feet are in separate tracks, step one foot back. Check to see that your lower back is still in a steady, stable pelvis. If you are collapsing or propsing, just adjust the foot distance. Bend into the front knee, finding the power line of the sit bone to the knee to the heel. Let the knee come back up and then sit back down into that power line. The back leg comes to the ball of the foot so you can rotate your body toward the long end of the mat and feel how the pelvis slides across the leg bones and then rotate back toward the short end of the mat 
and back to the long end of the mat several times, finding the right amount of turn for your, your body today. Use the front hand to find that front crease of the leg bone. Imagine the connection of the pelvis to the spine. Author Donna Farhi talks about the pelvis being like the center dial of a clock and the spine is like the hour hand. This is an opportunity to explore the flexion in the front hip by bending at the hip crease, but keeping the spine straight like it's the hand of a clock. Try that up and down, tick tock, a few times, moving in and out of flexion and upright. You are attempting to feel the movement purely from the hip and keeping the waist and spine long and stable. Get a sense of how far you can bend forward and rest your hand on the leg, or if you prefer, you can use a block or pillow to bring that hand closer to the body. Allowing the other hand to say, stay by your leg or your hip or move up above the head. See if you can rotate the trunk open and toward the long end of the mat. Take a few breaths in this extended side angle pose. And then bring the body up and step back into mountain pose. Once again, make sure your feet are in separate tracks. Step the other foot back. Checking to make sure that you're stepping at the right distance. Bend into the knee that's in front, finding the power line. Coming up and down a couple times on that knee. And then lifting up the back foot to rotate the body toward the long end of the mat. Feeling how the pelvis glides across the leg bones. Rotate forward and back to the side several times, finding the right amount to turn for your body today. Use the front hand on the front crease of the front leg and explore the flexion on this side by bending the hip crease toward the front leg. Try a few times moving in out of flexion where the spine is like the hand of a clock, moving up, flexing down. You are attempting to feel the movement purely from the hip and keeping the waist and spine long and stable. Get a sense of how far you can bend forward on this side and rest your hand on the leg or a block or pillow if needed, allowing the hand on the other side, the other leg to stay near the body or to open up above the head. See if you can rotate the trunk toward the long end of the mat, opening up the chest toward the front. Take a few breaths in this extended side angle pose. Bring the spine upright and step the body back into a steady, easy mountain pose. Now it is time to find Shavasana. Take whatever you need to make yourself comfortable on your back. Begin to let go of the muscles in the face and invite thoughts to fade into feelings that continue to relax your neck, moving toward your shoulders. Feel them relax into the mouth. Fill your heart and give thanks to its silent, steady work. Allow the hips to let go, legs to fall open, 
arms comfortably open by your side, relax more and more. I will allow space for you to be quiet, just listening to music, and then invite you to come back at the end of practice soon. Find movement in your feet and hands. Bring the knees into the body in a hug. Roll on to the side and bring the body up into a seated position. At this moment, you can give thanks for the connection of the head that can analyze and the pelvic bowl that can integrate in order to find wholeness. Namaste. Now, as you rise from your mat, don't forget to eat more plants. You will feel and move better. Follow us for tips at flowingyen.com.